An interesting curiosity at the beginning of the 20th century was radiation, uh, or in particular radioactivity. Now, Basically what this is, is that there were certain heavy elements that were discovered that had an interesting property that even though they were wrapped up in a bottle or protected somehow, enclosed, that they would emit some type of a mysterious radiation that was very different than light in that it could pass through material, it could pass through black paper, for instance, and, and expose photographic film even though the film was covered up. So again, this m mysterious uh, radiation was analyzed much in the same way that everything was analyzed back at the beginning of the 20th century, that if you could generate a beam of the stuff, then you could pass it through an electric field and watch how it bends and get information about how heavy it was or what kind of material it was, what its charge was, and so on. And so, in particular, Becquerel and, and the Curies took uranium or polonium or radium, which they had just recently discovered, and generated a beam of radiation. Now, this is just simply by passing that radiation through a pair of slits so that you get a well-defined direction or trajectory of this radiation, and then passing that beam through a pair of electric plates. So once again, same idea as the Thompson tube, that we apply an electric field and cause this beam to deflect if it's indeed charged. Well, there were three things that came out of this radiation gamma particles, which turned out not to be deflected at all by the electric field, and gamma particles turn out not to be particles at all, but rather electromagnetic radiation, and we'll say a little more on that later, alpha particles, which were deflected by the magnetic field in such a way that it indicated that it had a positive charge, and beta particles, which were deflected in the opposite direction of alpha particles, and in fact were deflected to a much, much greater extent. So once again, they either had a much higher charge and opposite to an alpha particle, or they were just a whole lot lighter than an alpha particle. Well, beta particle turns out to be just a very high speed electron, so nothing unusual about it. But the alpha particles, now those were interesting beasts. These were very high energy, very high kinetic energy, fast moving in other words, particles that were sent out not by accelerating them, but just they were emitted at very high energies. They were quite massive compared to an electron, and this seemed like a wonderful opportunity. Much in the way my son, when he wants to figure out how one of his toys works, the best way is to take it apart or smash it with a hammer and find out what's inside, and it's been very hard to break him of that habit, but he's got the scientific mind because that's exactly what these guys did. They aimed these alpha particles at everything that moved and things that didn't move, trying to break them into pieces to find out what was inside. So, one of the big questions of the time time was, what did an atom look like? Were all the protons smeared out uniformly, or did they come in little clusters, or what exactly did the atom actually look like inside? We knew it had protons, we knew it had electrons, some even speculated that there were uh, neutral particles in the atom somewhere. Where were these things? So an experiment was devised by Rutherford, actually not Rutherford, but his, his students, Geiger and Mardson, but they were in his lab. And basically what they did was took this alpha particle source and shot it at a piece of gold foil. Now the idea again was not to shoot it, uh, well the idea was that in that gold foil were gold atoms and that you could probe the structure within a gold atom and find out where protons and these mysterious neutral particles, if they were there, where these things were by looking at how that alpha beam was scattered off of the atoms. So the basic idea would be, to give you an analogy, if I have a flashlight and I look at my hand, suppose I hold the flashlight here and I project it past my hand and I look at the shadow of my hand on the wall, even without looking at my hand, by looking at the shadow, I can see what my hand looked like, even if I can't see my hand, by shining this beam of light on it. And the idea is basically the same, that by looking at where the scattering was, where these alpha particles landed on this detector screen, you could, get an, you could infer what was inside the gold atoms, the hope was. Well, what they found was absolutely astonishing. Most of the alpha particles, the vast majority, went right through the gold foil as if it wasn't even there. 
Very, very strange. No scattering whatsoever. But once in a while, an alpha particle would apparently bounce off of the gold foil and sometimes with a, so giving you a completely different trajectory, sometimes so radically different that it would be bouncing back towards the direction that it was coming from. Now to, to paraphrase Rutherford, it was as if you were shooting a gun at a tissue paper and the bullet would bounce right off the tissue paper and come back at you. It was that astonishing. The only way that this possibly could happen is if all of the mass of the gold atom was isolated in one very, very small volume at the center, let's say, of the atom, at the nucleus of the atom. This was a, the, the term coined. Um, now, how small would that volume actually have to be? Well, a few calculations revealed that the volume, or the, I should say the, the diameter, of the nucleus would have to be about 10 to the minus 15th meters. Now, that's really, really small, but just how small is that? Well, the size of an atom, which we assume is very small, is 10 to the minus 10th meters about. So five orders of magnitude difference. To give you an analogy again, if you were to take an orange and put it at the pitcher's mound on the Houston uh, on the pitcher's mound at the Houston Astrodome if the Astrodome was the size of an atom that orange would be the size of the nucleus so you can see a very very small amount of volume indeed and nobody nobody would have ever guessed that ahead of time so this was an example of an experiment which radically changed our ideas of what made up the atom